let's take a quick look here. This is the map layout of the new SAS portal on the left hand side. Um, similar to the old maps layout, we have these um, uh, sites listed here. The table view, if you prefer table view, is down here, not uh, up above where it was before. So that's been moved slightly. Um, and when you click on a CBSD, the details about that CBSD appear over here on the right hand side in a panel. So we don't have to leave maps view and we still get this, all of the information about this particular device. So that's super handy. Um, I'll mention that this deployment here, as I said, in the deployments you see in the test SAS are not part of uh, production. You don't get billed for them. Um, they are, are test uh, for test purposes only. You can set up any devices you want in the test SAS. We've provided that information to you as part of your onboarding. And, um, but you can't use this for actual deployments, actual deployed devices. They have to be uh, in test mode. Um, the new concept here in, the, uh, in this version of the SAS portal is what's called a site. So if you notice here, I've got these CBSDs, but when I click on the CBSD, the first thing it does is it gives me the site name, which is automatically put in based on the name of the CBSD and the latitude and longitude. A site is a location, call it like a tower, and you can have multiple CBSDs on a single tower. And I'll get in, I'll show you some uh, tricks in terms of how to create those in just a sec. But the concept that we were finding is that if you, it, it's very frequent that people would have more than one CBSD at a particular tower location. So, so we've created this concept called sites and you can add multiple CBSDs to a single site, manage your network a little bit better that way. As I said, the site name's on top. Once I click over here, this is where I, the device is. If I want to make a change to this device, um, well, this one is, uh, is actually not registered. Let me show you one of these green ones here that's actually on the air. I want to, you'll notice here, my device has a lock button next to it. That's because it's a, it's product, it's, it's a device that is, uh, is heart beating. And a shout out, by the way, to the folks on the Google team who put this network together and uh, uh, make it look pretty for me. So if I wanted to make a change to the CBSD, I would click the lock button and it unlocks the device. Then I can make a change and I can sign if I'm a CBSD and it's a cat B that requires signature. If I, uh, in the three dot menu here, I have two little options, which are kind of fun. I could zoom right into the device if the map isn't zoomed. And I can also duplicate that device. That's the pro tip. If you're setting up two identical CBSDs in the same site, set the first one up, then duplicate it. Once you do that, a second device will appear here. And it will have most of the same settings as your first device. What's not the same? The serial number. Right, you have to enter that unique serial number for every de every um, every uh, device. I'll show you how that works um, with the uh, Wyoming site. Zoom way out. So this site, for example, it's, it's uh, it has an issue. How do I know it has an issue? Well, it's, it's red. I've clicked on it, it and over here, you'll notice I have two tabs, config and status. If I click on the status, look, I get the error message here. This is the registration error that occurred when we tried to register this device. Now we did that on purpose. So we could show that the UI is actually giving you device state information. And we do that for registration errors and grant errors. I'll show you a grant error in just a second. So all your config stuff on this tab, status over here. And if you click learn more, it brings up our help center automatically about all the errors that you can see and all the information is right here for you. We see the 102 error. Here's the 103 error that we see and all the things you can do to fix it. Okay. Oops. Yes, it did bring up PA. All right. 
So let me see if I can remember the shortcut to get back to this. And is it uh, Control Tab? I think yeah. Switching tabs in Chrome is Control Tab. Okay, so I've if I want to create a second device here in Wyoming, I use that three dot menu. <gasps> Wait a minute. There's no duplicate device. What happened? Well, you have to unlock a site first. I unlock the site. I click. Then I can either delete or duplicate. I duplicate the device. And here I get a whole second CBSD. We'll point it in the other direction. And you see it's gray. That's because the status of this site is draft hasn't even registered yet. So a gray site is in draft mode. A red site has an error. These green sites over here are on the air. I'm kind of running you through the, sorry, I clicked on it, so it zoomed in automatically, but um, the uh, green sites are on the air. And we have one other color here, which is orange. This site has a grant error. I'll pause as well to note that you'll notice these two sites here are collapsed together. There's two sites in Salt Lake City, but the UI collapses them together. If I had 10 sites in Salt Lake City and I was zoomed out, it would show a little circle with 10. As soon as you click on that number two, it zooms you in and expands those sites out. That's what I did before accidentally. So um, uh, that's how we see multiple sites displayed here. If you've got networks over multiple cities, you'll probably run into that. Now, looking at this Denver device here, Let's zoom to that device. Oh, let's do it this way. You can right click, zoom into site. Boom, here I am I'm looking right at it. The site, as you see, is yellow. When I click on the device and go to status, here's my grant information. I see it's got one grant. If I mouse over the grant uh, here, it tells me the frequency range. And below, it lists the actual grant information. When I click this little carrot to expand it, here I get my suspension reason, IAP pending. So there's a GWPZ somewhere near this site that's forcing me to go through CPAS. So I'm gonna have to wait until after midnight to get a grant on this particular device at this power level. Or I can decrease the power level and hope that I go below the, the IAP threshold. I'm getting a little technical here. But suffice to say, we are giving you the information about suspended grants now. Or term, uh, yeah, suspended grants. Um, and here it says what that reason is. And you can go to the Help Center and uh, find out more about the reasons that grants are suspended. Um, so that's map view. Let me quickly look at table view. I've gone a little bit off my my script for this morning. So I'll have to go back in just a second and, and uh, make sure I didn't forget anything. Um, uh, yes, I did forget one thing. That's fine. Um, so here we have table view and we can see we've added some stuff to this table view in the new UI. We see the a graphical representation of each of these grants. Here I've got multiple channels. If I click on this device, I see I've got three this particular device has three grants. When I click the carrot, ah, it's, I'm sorry, it has one grant for 30 megahertz. Pardon me, look at that. When I click the carrot, I see there's only one grant listed and here's the information. And when I mouse over, it actually told me that too. So there's something that's different between map mode and table mode here. You notice if I want to create a new device here in table mode, I can click on the new site button at the top. Going back to map view, there's no new site button. There's a new site mode. So I click on this mode and then click anywhere in the map and it will put a site there. I can also use the right click. Right click, add site with CBSD. So I can add a site by right clicking or by using this add site mode. Okay. Now, um, that's one of the differences uh, that I forgot to show you. 
The other thing that I want to dive into just a little bit, because it <clears throat> can be confusing, pardon me, is the settings. Over here on the lower left is the settings sprocket. And that brings up the user management for my network. And this is where we see the four possible users modes for my network. So if I'm managing my network here, and again, this is the test environment, so you can do anything you want over here. And we encourage you to do that. If you haven't already clicked on that link that's in the chat, bring up that link because we launched the SaaS portal, this new UI for everyone to use. So go try it out if you're not following along. By all means, if you joined us late, click on the link in the chat, bring it up, and you'll be able to play around in the test, the staging SaaS environment that we put together for you. And you can do all this stuff and click around and ask questions in the chat. We'll have a Q&A here in just a sec. So um, post those questions in the chat about this UI or anything SaaS if you have them. Okay, back to user management. We have uh, four types of users. Admin users, CPI users, editors, and viewers. An admin can do anything. They can edit a site. They can add users like I'm doing here. What they can't do is sign a device, right? Only a CPI can sign a device. That's the difference between an admin and a CPI. The other difference, a CPI can't add users to the, uh, the organization. But they can sign a device. An editor is, you know, your RF engineer. They can change sites around. They can input stuff. They might even be someone on your customer team. Putting new sites on the map, whatever you want to do. Adding devices here and there, taking a look at how they're behaving. And they can also change things. Whereas a viewer is someone who can just access the tool. They can't make any changes. Maybe they don't know uh, about CBSDs and all that stuff, but you still want them to be able to view your deployment and the status and everything. So you can do that there. Um, so this is um, the difference between each of those users. And happy to go into that if you have any questions, if I glossed over something. Um, uh, just post a question there in the chat. And now to the, the one cool thing. <laughs> cool because I didn't think it was going to uh, make it into the release. And here it is. Night mode. If you click on the little guy up there in the upper right, we've added a night mode to the user interface. So you can manage your network at night without uh, hurting your eyes. <laughs> That's just a fun little thing there. So. Go back to regular mode here. Right next to night mode is something that's actually, hopefully, really useful for you. That's the feedback tool. If I click the feedback tool, it brings up the help documentation right in the user interface. It also gives you the option to send feedback down here at the bottom. And this is why, this is what's important. If you find bugs uh, while you're testing today, uh, right now, or any other time, you can uh, click this button to send feedback. It opens up the feedback tool with, within the SAS portal. You type in your ideas, the thing you found that's a bug, the thing that you don't like how it's designed, the thing that moved somewhere where you can't find it, whatever. When you click, and, and by the way, you can click to send a screenshot here if you want to highlight something on the screen. When you click send, it goes right to our product team. So this is why we're, you're like our, our trusted testers. You're checking this thing out in the demo environment, and you're helping us find little things that we may not have found in our development process. So please, if you have bugs, if you see things that you'd like to change, use this feedback tool to send it to you. Again, you do that up here in the upper right, click the feedback button, and then at the bottom of this uh, window that opens up, click send feedback. And let us know if you find things that, uh, that might not be working for you or that you might think uh, uh, you'd like to, to change. That's called a feature request. We'd take those too. So please do uh, bring those along. Um, oh, I didn't show this before on any of my demos, and I totally forgot to show it until just now. This little tiny carrot here is hidden here. 
But if you click it, it collapses the sidebars. Kind of cool, huh? So if I want to see a full page view, I can do that. I can just see my, my network. And I can re-expand it by re-clicking on that little handle. I forgot that. So uh, now you've seen everything. <laughs> um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we will be unrolling this, uh, sorry, rolling this out into production soon. But um, if you haven't already, do try it out. Let us know if you have any questions, any feedback. Send that our way. Um, any SAS questions at all, uh, post them into the chat. I'll be here for another, at least another seven minutes. We'll leave this channel open, leave the, uh, the live stream going so that you can ask questions. Um, and hope that uh, that, that um, is is great. Thank you for trying out the uh, this new UI. We hope it's a huge improvement for you. Um, we hope you appreciate the troubleshooting, uh, the the new usability, and all the great stuff that our engineers worked really hard to do for you. Uh, we're constantly trying to improve um, our SaaS product, and this is a big part of it this new user interface.